Hello everyone, it's Leo and in this video I'm going to talk about my experience watching Aikatsu Planet. This is going to kind of be a review of this lovely season and it's obviously going to contain spoilers. So if you haven't watched Aikatsu Planet and you don't want to know certain details, even though I'm not going to go deep in them, this might not be for you. So let's start because there's a lot to talk about. I am someone who likes Aikatsu. I am not the craziest person for Aikatsu because I don't usually enjoy anime that are very long. So the first season of Aikatsu, for example, is has more than 170 episodes. So it's like very huge for me. And the other Aikatsu seasons are also huge. The only season I have watched until the end is Aikatsu Friends. I mean, thinking that I've watched the first and second season of Aikatsu Friends. Uh, I've watched the first season of Aikatsu Stars completely and the first season of the original Aikatsu completely as well. I managed to finish them one day, but right now the one I finished is Aikatsu Planet, which instantly became my favorite Aikatsu. And there's, there are lots of reasons for that, but there is one specific reason that I want to talk about at the start of this video, which is right now which is idols. Aikatsu is basically about idols. And there is a character in Aikatsu Planet that is called Izumi. Izumi is the producer of, the, of a, an idol agency inside the Aikatsu Planet world, and she is played by the legendary idol Akimoto Sayaka, who was part of the AKB48 group, one of the biggest idol groups ever, at least in terms of success, it's probably the biggest. And she was a legendary member of this group. I think I consider she was part of the group in its peak, but I'm not the biggest AKB48 fan to talk about that. There is a scene in this show that Izumi shares her experiences with idols and what draws her in. And she shares that she was feeling down, she was feeling lost, and she was feeling depressed in her life and she didn't know what to do she had no happiness inside of her and life felt very meaningless but everything changed when she saw idols performing and those idols as she explains in the show made a flower bloom in her heart and i feel like this is the power that idols have if you're an idol fan like me, you probably know the feeling. We don't look for idols going for the ones that sing the best, the ones that dance the best, the ones that have the perfect pitch and the best songs and the best vocal range or the best dancing skills or the best acting skills or best voice acting skills. No, what we want is to watch a good performance of someone who is pouring her heart and soul into the stage or into a recording while transmitting life and energy and happiness. We want to feel embraced. We want to feel welcomed with the energy that the idols give us. And I really loved when Izumi was able to share that with us, the viewers, because I really feel the same. And it's very important to say that I'm talking about Japanese idols here because Korean idols, which are very popular nowadays, are very different. They are in a different league. And I feel that the fans of the Korean idols, they don't look for the same thing as the fans of the Japanese idols. It's just a different experience. None is better than the other. They're just different. And I got to plan it really was able to light that fire, that passion for idols in me again. I mean, different than the other Aikatsu seasons. Probably because it has half a live action segment and half an anime section. I love both things. And, you know, seeing idols acting as idols, like in flesh and blood, it's very nice. And I really loved that we had that segment. So Aikatsu Planet is the first and so far the only Aikatsu season that has this difference. It has a live action segment and an anime section. 
And because of this, the anime section in Aikatsu Planet does not look as good as the other Aikatsu seasons in terms of production value. It looks cheaper and it looks way simpler. I'm not talking about the performances because the performances, I think they are up to par to uh, past seasons, but the rest of the anime is not. It kind of looks weird. But there is one thing that makes everything look good, which is the design of the characters. In Aikatsu Planet, I think that they really mastered the Aikatsu style and they all look amazing. All the eight idols, the eight main idols of this show look amazing. Their designs are top notch, in my opinion. I love them and they all look incredible. And their human counterparts are also incredible. All the actresses, all the girls that were able to live their lives as idols for a little while were really incredible in their roles. Like, all of them did a stellar job. And it's interesting to say because, you know, we don't go watching an Aikatsu Planet episode looking for Oscar level acting. We don't. And what's funny is that Aikatsu Planet features the, in the live action segments lots of weird, quirky, and anime-like scenes. You know, they are so disconnected from reality that it makes everything very funny and entertaining and heartwarming. And the acting of all the girls, they really made my heart feel warm. Like, they were really giving it their all. Even though sometimes they were not perfect, it didn't really matter because we could see how hard they were working to portray the characters and how lovely the characters are in I Come to Planet. We have a cast of eight main idols and all of them are so different from each other. They all represent a different type of idol and I absolutely loved every single one of those characters. They all have something to add. They all have something um, entertaining about them. And I really felt that they really captured my heart, especially Ludi and Meza. Both of them are my favorites. Mostly Ludi, I really love her. She's so crazy and oh my God, she's so amazing. Both in her human form and her Aikatsu form, they're both my faves. But Meza, I feel like was the best from this show. It's interesting to look at her actress and see that her actress was not very confident in singing or dancing because she'd never really done this before and see her acting as Meza because Meza is the best one from the show, like technically speaking. She dances like crazy, she captures everybody's hearts and she is an amazing singer in the show. And she was able to portray that so easily. She made it look so easy. When I was watching the behind the scenes and saw her saying, that she was having a hard time and she was doubting herself. I was like, girl, you played us. This was an Oscar worthy <laughs> nomination because girl, she played me totally. And Meza's character is so gorgeous. And the whole premise of Aikatsu Plant rests on Meza and Hana, who is the main character, and Mao, or Mao or Hana, who is the main character. And their dynamic is so cool. Like Meza was Hana. Meza was the idol Hana, and she leaves the Aikatsu world. She disappears, and then someone has to fill in Hana's shoes, and the newbie, Mao, ends up getting the Hana role, and she has to prove herself as a top idol. And she started at the top already. It was so nice. Like, this premise is so nice. It could have had so many problems, but it was worked so nicely. Loved it. And Mao is right now my favorite Aikatsu lead, Aikatsu main character. She is incredible. And, you know, she was not someone who was thrown in as the role of Hana. She had a dance ability. She was a good ballet dancer. So she already knew how to move her body and how to express herself. And her passion for being Hana after she became Hana was so cool and so nice to watch and her evolution during the show was also gorgeous. So we have her friend Shiori who also becomes an idol in the middle of the show. Shiori is a little bit more contained but she has her quirky side too and she's always asking 
questions. Love that about her. There's this whole uh, Alice in Wonderland, not, not Alice in Wonderland, like uh, fairy tale theme and motif for her, her dressias, and I love that. And we have an amazing cast of characters. I feel like one of the problems of Aikatsu as a whole is that it's usually like it's usually featuring uh, a group of characters and someone in this group has to fail because we have the leads and the, the ones that are going to win the competitions and the ones that are set to fail in Aikatsu they, it, it's it's kind of hard to watch that because they are built and they're like uh, created in the season and then we see them fail like as a plot device. And in the season, I felt that they were able to work everybody inside their own realms. Like, it's normal seeing someone like Shiori failing, someone like Un not getting into Planet, Grand, Planet Princess Grand Prix, and uh, Sala not even trying to get in. You know, things like that are okay. The only downside, in my opinion, was Kyoko slash Beat, because she is a character that was almost always on top, and she was perfect in everything she did, but every time the show tried to focus a little bit more on her, it was to show that she was kind of failing because we only had four spots at the end competition of the show, which was playing Princess Grand Prix. So Kyoko, I felt, was the one that got the short end of the stick in this aspect, in this season, and I actually think that she was worked very nicely. I love this fact that she is a perfect girl. She is the student council vice president. Everybody who respects her at school, she's able to create different rules for the students and their costumes and everything. And she's able to become a totally different idol than herself. And she brings this concept of being someone that you don't appear to be, but you are on the inside. And you can show that on the Aikatsu Planet world. Love that about her incredible and then we have like the cutesy and fluffy un who is a very cute and uh, a very cute character and she is totally obsessed with cupid slash ayumi who is one of the top idols of the world and ayumi is also her friend but she is like always obsessing about her and i actually love i don't usually like those characters that are obsessed with others but un was actually funny and nice to watch i liked that but I feel like Meza was really the one who really swooped everything. I really loved all of her philosophy and how she carries the legacy of the idols, you know, in her and how she feels and how she sees idols. Love, love, love Meza. Love Rose, the second character she creates. Oh my God, the visuals. Amazing. And there is a dynamic in this, uh, which is the Aikatsu battles. So every episode there is at least one battle in which two girls confront each other and there is the Dressia element as well. So they go and search for like creatures like Digimons or Pokemon. They have to capture them in dresses to use them in their performances. And in concept, it was nice. And sometimes they were able to hit the mark with the Dressias and sometimes they were not. Hana was able to get her dressia. Mao was able to get her dressia very easily. It didn't feel good at all. It kind of felt a little stupid. But it was nice that some in some other uh, times we could see other girls going after their dressias and having a hard time going after them and having to fight for them. Like Rose had to really go undergo a forest of thorns to get her dressia. Un was able to discover something about her dressia before getting her and the dressia did not want to help on before that. So, you know, sometimes they hit the mark and sometimes they don't. And the dressia battles are weird because in the middle of the battle, you already know who is going to win the battle. And it's kind of a bummer, but I don't think that the, the results of the battles are that surprising, except for like maybe the last one. But overall, I feel like the results of the battles are like 
really able you're really able to see the results in the in the episode plot itself you know you're able to watch that and then you say oh my god this girl is going to win for sure or oh no this is she's she's being set up for fail you know like you're able to see that in the narrative itself so it's not that big of a problem and the dresses themselves like the dresses they look very nice i love the visuals of the season but I have a big problem with one of the dresses that is used in lots of times, which is Rudy's dress. And it's called Glossy Ruby. And I really don't understand because Rudy is a character that is super, super quirky and crazy. And uh, she, she makes no sense. And we love her for it. And she has this totally like out of the box personality and then when we see her in the Aikatsu Planet world, she is very classy. And I feel that's kind of weird. And the glossy ruby dress feels so ugly. Like, it's so ugly. The blue dress, which is the one when, when she wins the battles and she transforms in, it, it looks better. But I still feel like the, the Ludi style, they were not really captured in her dresses. I understand you can say, oh, but this is another style of Ludi that she is showing. Yes, but that is never really touched upon in the show. You know, they never really explain this other side of hers that I don't think it exists, actually. You know, they use this more for Kyoko. And at the end of the show, there is the dress ya up thing, and uh, Rose and Cupid are able to evolve their dresses because of how they see their passion for performing, their passion for Aikatsu. And it's amazing. It's really, really amazing, this evolution. But then, they only use the evolved uh, dresses in one battle, and only one is going to win. So only Rose is able to use her evolved dressia. Cupid evolved her dressia, but she was never able to change in her dressia. I was like, what? Why couldn't they make an exception for this battle and have both of them win in that middle part. And then at the end, you give the battle to one of them. But, like, what? Why? And why did they not give the same for Ludi and Hana in their own battles? Because the Ludi and Hana battle, the Planet Princess Grand Prix felt very huge and big. But when Hana and Ludi were, were battling, like they battled at the start of the episode, there was no really, not really a setup for that. And I felt like, oh god, no way. And I really wanted to see Ludi achieving her dressia up. It would have been very nice. And the way Hana achieved her own dressia up was very nice as well. And overall, Aikatsu Planet, what an experience. I had the time of my life, and I feel very emotional talking about it, actually, because this was an amazing show. And I feel like the live action really highlighted how much I loved each of the characters. And I wonder if they're going to do it again in a future season, maybe. I don't know. And it doesn't really matter, because they've already done it with Aikatsu Planet, and it worked so well for me. So every time I want this, I'm going to look for more Aikatsu Planet. And I know there's a web show of, of Aikatsu Planet, I'm going to have to check that out. And I also have to check the movie that is coming sometime, I have no idea. But I want the Aikatsu Planet movie, come on, give us a teaser, give us something. And one last thing that I forgot to talk about, the songs. Great songs. Great songs. Oh my god. The songs of Aikatsu Planet are very, very good. And there are lots of different versions of the songs as well, like uh, the duo versions of the songs, and then we have like some group songs and songs that are sung, the same songs sung by different uh, girls because, well, they all perform the song. So it's very nice. And I have a particular fave. I love lots of songs. I love Kirari Party Time. I, have, I love Blue Me Smile. I love Flying Tips. But my absolute favorite is Lady, 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 which actually became my favorite Aikatsu song. I love that song already so much. And I really love Aikatsu Planet, okay? This is my favorite Aikatsu. What a great season it was. Incredible. 
And what a lovely cast of characters we had. What a lovely cast of actresses working on this season we had. I cannot wait for the movie. Anyways, everyone, I want to take this time to thank the members of the Magical Cinema Channel. Thank you very, very, very much for your support. Thank you for standing by Magical Cinema. And if you've watched the channel, thank you so much as well. And let's say it one more time. Mira in!